You are watching a Fact TV presentation of the Town of Swansea Selectman Meeting. Make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 29th. I'll second. Motion to be made and seconded to, to approve the uh, minutes of March 29th. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion to be made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Uh, any further additions, deletions? No, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll call for the vote. I can't do think. Public input. Hearing none. Uh, what do you want to do? It's working on it. Do right, you want to make a motion that we approve? Angelo Skip D. Bernardo for a two year term on the Economic Development Advisory Committee. Second. Motion to be made and seconded to uh, approve the nomination of the Skip D. Bernardo. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Who's your, is it an open seat or is he replacing somebody? Uh, yeah. Was it was open? I believe so. It's hard to keep track of all the comings and goings. I don't know if that was Larry Sportello's spot or, uh, but it's, yes, it's an open seat. Great. And then uh, we also had Mark Scalera submit for conservation commission that came oh, good in for him. yesterday. So I'll make that motion. For a two year term. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve Scalera. Mark Scalera, yep. Uh, for the uh, conservation commission. Aye. 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 Good plan. So we've added a, another nomination. All right, appointments. The California North uh, Winchester Street Advisory Committee Chair, Mr. Kamala, is present. How are you, Michael? Us mics have to stick together over here. Michael so. might share the oh, microphone with you. Uh, do you want to share the microphone? Uh, our goal was to determine uh, out of five different options, two of them that we would recommend to the selectmen to um, help uh, renovate uh, California Street and Winchester Street. Um, and I think I and or come up with other suggestions, maybe. Was is that is that basically what we're talking about? Yes, that's basically what we're talking about. Okay. Now the the, the first thing is that um, we said that we, we we thought the first option was that we could leave them the, the way they are, both ways, uh, and leave them the way they are. The second option we chose was uh, to take California Street. And make it one way and make Winchester Street both ways and and part of the part of the reason was that is that uh, the business at the end of um, Winchester Street uh, at Bob's uh, garage uh, the way they operate uh, and what they do for the town of Swansea and going to accidents and what have you um, they said they would they, they'd probably put them out of business and 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 that being one of the main streets um in west swansea i i, I think that it's very important to keep that street both ways it'd be nice to keep them, uh, both of them both ways now the other thought is you know uh, to uh, we we really think that uh, main street should should be extended to Route 10. So that would be the main entrance to West Swansea on, on Main Street. Um, right now, Google has it, you know, that you have to take uh, California Street. Well, if you're coming down one way uh, from Keene and you see California Street, you'll probably take a, take a right and head out to the uh, trailer park or uh, California Brook Estates. 
so it would it would solve that problem and, and enlighten people where Whitcomb Hall and the historic district is in West Swansea. So um, first, I, I'd like to establish um, where Main Street starts and where it ends. Main Street always went to Winchester Street. California Street starts on the other side of Winchester Street. Winchester Street was Route 10 in the earlier years. And so the club building, the AA building was on Main Street. Uh, so what, what I'd like to, what, what I just wanted to make that point because I, I think we need to bring that Main Street oh, straight through to Route 10 and be able to put some signage up to say, this is Main Street and this is, it, this is important to us to come to the historic part of um, Swansea and, and this uh, beautiful Main Street. The, the, other, um, the other part uh, that we, we looked at is, you know, it, it'd be nice if we didn't have to have a sidewalk, maybe, maybe we could make the road a little wider. Or maybe if we move some telephone poles on California Street, there's two telephone poles very, very close to the road. Uh, maybe there's another option of uh, maybe fixing the stone wall a little bit and making a deal with Ann. Uh, in any of those are not options uh, because of, of price. Um, then, then you know, it'd be up to the selectmen to decide how they how, how they're going to maybe just take one road and improve it instead of trying to improve two. Um, and, and and the last thing is, you know, we're always going to have uh, the the problem with traffic going through the covered bridge, and and especially in times of crisis like uh, the accident that we had here a few weeks ago on Route 10, where everybody was trying to get through the bridge at the same time, and most people didn't know West Wanzi from. <laughs> You know, and they go to the bridge and people have gone one at a time and uh, a few people got ugly, I guess. But anyway, you know, when you get there, if you just, when one car goes, you all go, it makes it a lot faster. Instead of waiting for somebody else to flick their lights on and off and maybe why don't you be nice to me and... You know, if you've got six cars lined up on one side and you're going, all of you go. And vice versa on the other side. Uh, you know, I ran a business right next to the Keller Bridge for um, almost 40 years myself and, and, uh, uh, and lived on the other side of the Keller Bridge. Uh, so I was kind of familiar with the, with the, uh, what, what the, uh, what was right and wrong, you know, the people used to say, your front wheels are in the bridge first, you have the right of way, and the people behind you have the right of way. And those were basically the only two things. There's one more thing, though, that you can't honk your horn at midnight because you might wake up my mother and father. But that's basically the rules that we should, we should try to make people follow a little closer, and then we wouldn't have any buildups on either side of the either side of the bridge. Um, the other thought is that you know we still we still haven't addressed the uh, big trucks uh, uh, or camper trailers or um, the things that are coming to Swansea that are trying to get to Swansea Lake or the, the uh, actual river here uh, uh, camp area um, and. We should, if, if, for a long time, when we built the uh, David Perry Bridge uh, on um, Denman Thompson Avenue, we thought that, that the, the road would go to Route 10. And if we, if we at some point, made plans to do that, uh, that would take a lot of traffic away from the covered bridge and away from Main Street uh, and, and, and get it onto Route 10 quickly. Uh, and, and I'd like to suggest that maybe we could uh, try to put that in our plans for future traffic patterns and uh, 
see if we could work on it to see how we could make that happen. And, and I'd like to ask the Sleckman uh, if they'd uh, changed the name of California Street on the east side um, of Route 10 to Main Street. And I guess that's it, unless you have any questions. I do, Mike. I'm not, I followed the, the change, the name change, and I followed the Ben and Thompson extension. But what, what I didn't follow was the committee's recommendation. Well, the, the, the recommendation was uh, option one, I believe, was that you could leave it the same. Is that the committee's recommendation? That was one of them. And the other one, yes, for two. And the other one was to make California Street one way in and leave um, Winchester Street both ways. No, did you repeat the first recommendation or the first recommendation? Make it as it is. Did uh, did Joe have any? Uh, Joe DeRusso have any in, input on that? With which way he preferred, or felt DPW preferred from a safety perspective. I, I was I, Joe. Uh, Joe would definitely uh, said I'm I'm here to give you information, um, and he certainly said I I, I need to follow the Sleckman's uh, wishes by uh, you know following your your uh, what do you call it? Your uh, letter to me, and, and you said you follow these, oh, the make these decisions. Committee's charge. Uh, thank you. So, from a DPW maintenance, it really doesn't matter how the traffic patterns start. It's not going to really change much for us. We can move to any of them. Uh, one of the big challenges with California Street is, as Mr. Duell said, how narrow it is, uh, which makes it a challenge to build a road with current spread. So, this is an off road. And then a lot of the grant funding is because of the sidewalk, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. If we did remove the sidewalk, it would give us more space to build and build adequate width, but then we lose grant funding for the sidewalk, so there's a lot to it. So what is your thought? I guess it's going to come down to funding, and, uh, and a little bit more with the engineer team they can work with. The public's input is they want the traffic pattern to remain the same. Uh, and uh, if we did have to go with one way, I think the other way would be what the committee decided is to be California coming in and then North Winchester remain two way traffic uh, with the improvement. We were trying to get it narrowed down before we had an informational meeting in, in May so that there weren't. 10 options to choose from that they'd kind of gone through some initial local vetting uh, and get it narrowed down. So I don't think we're looking for you to pick one of the choices tonight. It was just to have uh, Mr. Gamarillo report on the findings and then prepare for the, I think it's May 3rd, when we'll have a public info meeting, we'll send out letters like we do to the folks on these streets and make sure they're here so they understand and give them another opportunity to weigh in. And the cost differences. And do we have a sense of how much land we own width wise? Is it down far right of way? I believe so. These engineers have that they didn't get the very very limited. So what we what we basically see is a, is a footprint that's that's yeah, the, the sidewalk at the edge of the road yeah, here. With no additional so basically from a stone wall. Yeah. I, I can just from my own experience at my office. Which is a which is a one way in, one way out, and and watching people go the wrong way, uh, and they do it uh, multiple times during the course of a day. I think if we were to go one way on California Street, we'd be on well better be sure we've got incredible signage, so people don't make a left hand turn coming out of their homes, uh, or just go through it because of because of routine, because that would be potentially catastrophic, especially for the person thinking it's one way. I don't, I don't think the people uh, on, on California Street want it one way. Uh, I think that's the 
solution that we finally came up with because that's the least number of people that would be affected, except for the people who go through the covered bridge and try to get to Route 10 quick every day. So uh, we did, we, we tried to do it the least painful way that we could think of. Anybody nope. else in the gallery here? I know when we get the good notes, but are you satisfied with it? I think that's good. I mean, what you suggested is, is the end of North Winchester Street where it meets through the town. Um, there's an annual issue out there. There's a pretty hazard condition with people coming in off of Route 10. They're cutting a corner and very close to getting hit head on and trying to come out. Um, I don't know if there's any way that could maybe be spread off or try to make that more easily for people to enter or exit on that corner. Yeah, we've been charged to not be able to work with the state look at the boundary and come up with a way to get design. I have a letter from Bob's garage and about wow. the, uh, of the, of the concerns that he had, and maybe I'll turn this in so the selectmen will have uh, the opportunity to to read it over and think about what their concerns are. But you're you're you, you, you're satisfied with what Winchester Street being two way, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And that's the way the committee is. Was there any discussion about making California Street one way, the other way? Yes, there were, there were several different options. And it just, the goal of the was to narrow it down to two. The other ones considered there was a lot of discussion and then decided that they weren't, they wouldn't work and they wouldn't be passed. The only other issue you're going to have motorhomes that are trying to get into the campground do we have several of them turn in and ask them for directions which is good but if they come in I won't be able to come back out well, so so they can come, come back out no point just here I'm just afraid of you having campers getting stuck down in there because they're not going to make that right off of off of California Street onto the street next to the mill where they have a sign to go over there it is not happening on the street. So they, yeah, so they're gonna to have to go down and come back out by us and then go further south on the town to come in. It's gonna be a little confusing for them if they get in there the wrong one. It's not, <clears throat> one other thing, 18 wheelers that the little bit was, sometimes they can't get turned around to get back out. So they come down the street and go out California Street to get out. And that's a concern with mine. Um, if they put a curb at any way down there, it'll affect the, the trucks that are coming in and out. And they, and we have quite a few large trucks that come in. There's three car carriers that come in and pick them up. And we, we get deliveries on our transmissions and motors and 18 wheelers. So they have to have a way to get turned around and back out of there. Easy going. I could just add a little bit more of the committee's discussion about the choice of North Winchester, or not North Winchester, California coming in rather than going out. Um, one of the considerations was maintaining the sort of main street feel of California Street and it being the gateway to the West Swanson Village, whereas if it was just an exit, it's just an exit. And then another consideration was um, safety turning onto Route 10 and directing traffic to make their southbound turns from West Street rather than California Street. There's better sight lines. So those are the only other pieces. All right, any, any additional comments? All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Goodness. Thank you, Sarah. And of course.
Could I jump for it? No. Oh, don't go there. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Joe. You're up. Secondly, on the intersections, uh, planning between the Swiss Crossing Road sidewalk and um, some road improvements. I was getting ready to submit excavation permits to the state to change some intersections around. One of them, I think, Bill, will be near and dear to you because you've mentioned it to me is Carlton Road. These little, I call them slip lanes, these intersections have a little island in the middle and really no design to them. Essentially, I was going to be submitting driveway permits to remove those, so it's just simply a T intersection and removing the island. The same with Causeway, instead of the big island of trees in the middle, we own the property, the town owns the property. As part of the sidewalk project, we may not get to it this year, but we would eliminate those two slip lanes of Causeway and it would simply be a T intersection. I've already met with the state. It improves the line of sight and makes it safer. I just wanted to check with the select board before I put, put that into work. Uh, Carlton Roads are really size is that uh, at uh, Causeway. I'm not sure the exact. It's a, pretty, it's a large lot. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so yeah. it's a lot. And um, the Carlton, <laughs> the Carlton Road one uh, is a real easy fix. Causeway is going to result in a lot of tree removal and the tree company and then we would do the excavation so i would hope to get to it this year but it may have to wait for next year something that we work on maybe find some trees in the winter time um, before i take that step i just want to get the authorization from the board it's going to cut down on the linear feet of causeway by a third probably it's a pretty pretty and deep triangle it just improves everything from plowing how much extra plowing takes place for those two lanes and and then grading it just it, it's plowing it probably years you probably spend an hour Cleaning up those intersections where with the T intersection is simply going to come in and go out the other way. So Carlton would end up right south of it. Yes. Yeah, we'll just get rid of that island out of the middle. And I do plan on doing that this year because it's, it's minimal work, minimal expense. So the state, the state's all in favor of it because statistically they're showing they're much safer to have them that way. Yeah, that's what they're working on that as well as they do. As the either the town does the road coming in or they do. Like I'm sure so uh, Swansea Lake Road probably will be on the list and Swearage Crossing. So. Yeah. Does the forester determine about logging off of Causeway for the property in there? So not, not the corner piece, the main no, one? No, in there further. Yeah, the big piece. I think he did give a preliminary look at that one. Let me, uh, let me check my notes on that. That's something we can do. Might be able to go at the same time. And then take the Causeway. Well, I just want to know if the foresters look at long arms. I think it's going to be helping the bigger trees. Yeah. yeah, some of those trees are a little bit too big for our yeah. equipment. Uh, as soon as we get the waiting for the grant to get signed off on the sidewalk projects, all slated to get underway. Uh, and without any issues, we should be able to get that to the bridge of this year. And then the other issue I just want to make the board aware if you haven't heard the dirt roads right now are in really rough shape, but we just haven't been able to get on with the grader. We went out with a loader and tried patching some of the some of the potholes up on Cobble Hill, but it was just the ground was too frozen and there's still some water there. Um, but Monday as of Monday, we were gonna start this week, but with the rain scheduled. Monday we're gonna start down on uh on the Lake East and West Shore Gray Build Roads and within a two week time we should be able to get everything graded. But as of three or four days ago, Cobble Hill still had cross on the ground. A different area code up there. That is all I have. Additional questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, consensus is fine. We just didn't, we just wanted to make sure you were aware before we went and slashed up, especially Causeway. And it's going to be different, but I think I think it's going to be all positive. Yeah, I think it'll look much better. It'll be grassed in the area and some other section. Yeah. Nice corner lot. There'll be two, make it two the corners. Yard, so the tractor trailer that comes down and hits the covered brick and back back in and turn around. And then, you know, it sets that up for the future. I know there's a road that's fairly short, would be pretty cost effective to pave that, pave that, and then it's a lot easier on maintenance. So just thinking further down the road, if we get that intersection done, and it would be minimal to do that. 
Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, we're already on schedule. Uh, John. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick overview um, of revenue. So in 2022, we finished just over 20,000, um, which was a pretty good year. We were pretty busy. Um, this year is actually shaping up to look like it might even be a little busier. Um, right now with pending, I'm sorry, with rentals on the books, we're at just shy of um, 10,000. And with those, so basically what happens is when you rent the hall, you put 50% down and then you have a 50% balance of the rental fee. So with those pending fees, um, the current booked rentals are at $11,835. So we're not even really half of the year. Um, I am booking though into July, especially for Saturdays. Um, I do have Sundays available, but Saturdays seem to be the most busiest. Um, that's kind of a little up here. So through the end of March, you're more than you're almost sixty percent of what we did last year. So counting what that hasn't happened, it doesn't necessarily happen yet. It could be stuff that's booked yeah. like for right. I'm months. just looking at the at the booking methodology. So you're roughly at sixty percent one quarter of the way through the year. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Sorry. Okay, I'll take it, but <laughs> it's uh yeah. Um so Segwaying into that, um, Saturdays, the weekends are our busiest time. Um, and because we don't have the staffing to hold multiple events, um, we I want to see if you guys are on board with doing a minimum rental hour, like time frame. Um, so what we're proposing would be for weekdays, what did we do, two hours? Three hours. Three hours. So week, like a weeknight, if a meeting happened, um, a three hour minimum. Uh, it's just a lot to have an hour meeting um, to get the setup and has to come back and change the hall over and things like that. Um, so the three hour minimum, we, we were talking about a two hour minimum, but generally when I've seen these rentals for like the condo associated she's, ooh, condo association meeting, they're generally a meeting for about a two hour window. So they do need the setup and cleanup time. Um, so that's kind of why we bumped it up to three hours. I'm comfortable with saying two on the weekdays. Um, the weekends, though, I think a four hour, five. five. We did five hour window is good. Um, I've been seeing a lot of four to five hour rentals. Um, so we kind of just went with five um, as a starting point. I mean, I, I don't know what you guys have to say about it, but it's kind of what I'm thinking because we do lose out a lot having multiple events. I mean, there, there's definitely days we could have multiple events, especially like a birthday party at night. We just we just don't have the staffing. And, and I have gotten a number of requests for the same dates, and I just unfortunately can't accommodate people. Um, with that, cost of living, everything is increasing, electric, utilities. oil. What's it? Utilities. Utilities. Um, so we were thinking about doing a small increase. Um, it's about $10 per hour for each. I mean, I think it's pretty minimal. I think we were still kind of in the ballpark. I did check around to see what other towns were doing, and we still are in the ballpark of other light buildings around Cheshire County. Um, we are a little bit nicer than some of them. So, you know, I think that $10 increase isn't too much, and I, I don't think people will really bad an eye at that $10 increase. Other questions? What do we have planned in order to increase the staffing to allow us to increase the rentals? As far as I'm understanding, we don't really have any type of plans. Are we putting any money into a capital reserve as a set aside for war refinishing? We have a revolving fund, right? Is that what we mean? Yeah, so all the all the revenue goes into the revolving fund, which also 
largely offsets the utilities and the staffing um, for the for the not for Jenna's position, but for Ann when she comes in. Um, so it is making a little bit of profit, but I think the rent increase or the rental increase is partly to try to make some more profit to cover more capital type expenses. We've been, you know, when we have like when we did some of the lights and the cameras and we did some of the um, alarm stuff. Some of that's been funded out of the revolving fund, but it's it's definitely not at the point where it's building, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 a year for, you know, if we need a new roof or when it needs to be painted again. Um, so that's part of the thought of the um, of the increase is to cover the utilities, but also to try to get to a point where it is fully self-sustaining. And, and do we know what the expense was last year in comparison to I, I know I didn't. I'm not asking for it. Yeah. I, yes, we, yes, we do. do we know yeah. I don't think I need that. Positive. In other words, are, is our income exceeding our expenses or are we all right. flat? Or, I don't. Know, I can. I think it was. Pretty I, think it, I think it was a little. I made a little, like the, in, the rental fees were a little lower than the overall cost. Okay. So, the, so the increases we get. Depends if you count the capital items or not, I think is the. Kind of the difference if you, if you count like the 2000 3000 or if you're just looking at the utilities and stuff i think we covered the utilities yeah. and the operations i think the capital um i'll call it they still were really capital but the you know building projects let's say i think those um either made it break even or um, slightly in the negative but to your point about the capital improvement, I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea because this hall does get used tremendously and, and over years, you know, the floor is going to have to be refinished. Um, you know, door handles might break, you know, things like that. It wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, even if it's a minimal amount every year. Thank you. Tremendous growth. Seven years. I know. Sad to, sad to say goodbye, so. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, I guess if I want to stay back without my family. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, it's not. No. Apparently, I have to take up skiing, which I'm not really a cold weather girl. So. The restriction in your freedom is so sad. Those of you doing it willing, impossible. <laughs> She's only semi willing. Yeah, willingly might be a stretch, but I'm going along with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Norm, I see that your committee is pretty much intact. At least I think they are. Yeah. Okay. The gang's all here. Okay. So you're on. Okay. Um, the uh, charge that the board is left gave the uh, open monitoring committee. Um, I've been working on that. We have two meetings in the table, and uh, we have two meetings scheduled for March. We're meeting here at Lincoln Hall uh, on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. And our intent was to take the charge and start working on that, start you know gathering the information. And one of the first things that we did, and uh, uh, Lillian had been doing some work with uh, Helen Shepard uh, prior to the formalizing the committee, and so. We started working on that in that direction, and uh, in the intervening time, uh, Michael became aware of a uh, another grant opportunity, uh, community finance authority grant opportunity that um, is really promising. So uh, we tried to uh, do as much as we could in preparation of that. We're meeting with uh, a representative of the preservation office for the state of Hampshire next meeting, and we're meeting with Michael uh, yesterday on the fourth. Uh, One of the problems with the report is the speed of gold, and as you know, in the last three years, there's been a lot of changes with uh, inflation, lots of expenses, so we wanted to get up to date with that. But our focus is now really swung into the uh, grant, and uh, Michael has been kind enough to assign uh, uh, Julius to work with us on the uh, grant. And so all of the committee members have been writing. Uh, our, our recommendation is uh, basically uh, we want to get permission from the board. 
Bible grant that you get it to accept it, which would be an 85% uh, grant that you do accept each from the million dollars. So that would mean a lot of go a long way in that, in that building without having to ask the town for any money uh, other than what the town probably So, I don't think anyone in the city really felt that, you know, we wanted to get out of our, you know, only looking at public money because money probably been appropriated. Thankfully, it's still available. So, naturally, there are conditions for the grant, and uh, there's about 22,000 more narratives that have to be completed. And all of the members of the committee have been writing uh, content and working with. So one of the things in the charge that we were going to be working on is what would be the purpose of the building. That's always been a question that popped up. And we were working toward that even in our first couple of meetings, but the grant was kind of brought that more to the surface that we have to do. We didn't know what the purpose would be because we wanted to match the grant. So <clears throat> basically what the committee is recommending for a purpose for the, uh, for the grant is basically what it and not to minimize it or to uh, you just have the purpose what it's always been. It was built in uh, 1916 to be a gathering location for the community. It was a central place where people in the community could meet, hold meetings, and arrange a lot of other people to meet up there. And for you know a long time, uh, that was a really good spot for the community. The grant um, has some conditions. One is they want you to have a target. Population that we use for this rare, and our committee feels that the elderly population of the community uh, does not have a lot of good meeting space in the community where, get, where programs could be developed. We're not doing anything around coming up with programming, just getting them to the point where it could be used in the community, you know, working with different nonprofit organizations and town groups. So, four things. For purpose would be uh, elderly. The second thing would be government use. And we had some conversations about the need for meeting space in America tonight. But you know, a lot of people are looking for meeting space. But the town hall now is almost completely 98% dedicated to office space. And I think that that created a change. It was a need for office space, but the change was where you're going to meet. If you can meet here, and this is a great meeting place, but there is a very convenient meeting place that could take off some of the demand of this building. So, government meeting, committees, boards, commissions. The third thing would be um, go ahead. What's up? Oh, uh, uh, we talked with Joe, and uh, one of the aspects of the grant is um, you know, they are looking for apparently twist an emergency management. Twist to it. So I talked to Joe and said in the past we had uh, pocket shelters as a concept. And, you know, when I was in the emergency management director, that was something we were working on building pines, working on, and I know that this has been used. And instead of having like a mega shelter, have smaller neighborhood shelters, and then, you know, volunteer group could uh, support those. There's, there's no staff that could support those. And Joe said that he thought that that was a very good idea. And you know, people were familiar with the building because they were using it, they would be comfortable going there, they'd be close to services. And so that wouldn't be the primary use by any means, but it would be something that we could also use. And then the fourth thing was nonprofits in the community. And uh, there are a lot of nonprofit groups like the Preservation Society and other groups, elderly and otherwise, it doesn't have to be just elderly using the building, they would just be participants. So it would really be a sense of community, a sense of place in the terms of the grant. But they do make sense when you think about it because they you know, learn a lot of places where the community can use a meal like that. And they have chicken barbecues here for Wickham Hall. Those were good events because people came out to the community from that. And if you look at that as a small you know, version of that, and, and the community is not looking at you know, necessarily emulating what Wickham Hall did. This served a really great purpose, people renting it out. The committee isn't really recommending any big changes to the exterior or interior building on the National Historic Registry. 
and uh, the building has significant historic value uh, because it's one of six standalone ranges that was constructed just for that purpose, uh, and it is recognized by you know by the National Register. So we don't want to really recommend we're not recommending any significant structural changes to the outside or layout changes inside. If we just do the auditorium and then the downstairs kitchen and uh, dining room is either a second meeting room or a third meeting room, that's basically the recommendation. So where we're at is looking for support to continue working on this and going that direction. You guys have an opinion on this? I'm really amazed at that, you know, that we had a very short window for both. And then May 27th, the budget thing has to be in. Uh, April 24th, this one. Yeah. And everyone is just jumping in and being. Uh, yes, for the last like 30 days. But if we can't make that deadline for whatever reason, uh, there is a possibility of a second uh, submission for that. But just keep in mind this is a one time thing for a community center plan. This is a very rare. It, it, it hasn't really come up, and I think it's tied to the agreement. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's there for that purpose. And I think it was that purpose. So, the, the L chip would be 200, 250? The L chip goes up as high as 500,000 or maybe even more. We don't know. I don't know a lot about L chip. Really, I'm going to have to ask. It does, but I think this first grant, this CDFA grant, is the one that is seems to be the one time um, that's opened this opportunity for us. And of course, it goes up to a million dollars. That would be the first one. The L chip's like five hundred. Hopefully, that's right. Thank you. This is CDFA. Yeah. Let me give you a name. Tomorrow, I'll text you a name. She's working with us on a project in Hillsboro, <coughs> where we're also going to have CDFA. Oh, we are, but a community center is going to have a lot of work on that. Well, all the competing needs, you know, for fixing up the buildings, the library, the town, you know, all these different things are all going. You know, we knew that you know, this is going to be the best chance to get the building to take care of the town. All these other things, it's, it's in the bag. You know, you know, there's the historic side, which we weren't talking about a lot, but the group that has been in the Preservation Society for like a year, a decade, you know, has wanted to see the building be sold for the historic purpose too. And I think that there's a number of people in the community that believe in that, but I think there would be a lot of support. And the reason I, I uh, for the L, I mean, having a senior location, well, that, that was in Mike's report as well. They had, you guys had in 2019, Hearing, I think twenty thousand people came, and they listed those kinds of things that we're just talking about. This. So I think it, it was like right in front of us. We kept saying, "What's the purpose? What's the purpose?" And it kind of went in there for a long time. So, so assuming there was a, a combination of a million dollars and it's 85 percent, where's the other fifteen percent? So that cost me about one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So. Uh, you know, we do have money that was appropriated by the town, which is in the capital improvement budget, which is about the fund thrown out just for rough numbers over $38,000. And then um, there's some money, there's a lot of money that the preservation society has that I'm meeting last night, and they would be open to committing that money. They're also open to doing fundraising. I talked to Joe um, about, I think one or both of the grants would do in kind. Soft match, you know, uh, work that we've already done. So I think perhaps Mike's report that we already paid for to go toward it. And I said to Joe, I asked Joe, would, and, you know, would you be open to or would you be willing to do some of the site work in our septic system and parking? And he said he was very interested in and thought it was a very good project and that it could be approved by the board. So I think, you know, that he would be happy to work that in. Possibly get us fifty or fifty thousand dollar value that we would add. I don't know. But these are some of the questions that Paul and Matt July said. We're really hoping we can have more answers. Yeah. 
yeah, it is largely really good timing. It'd be nice if we had maybe 50 or 60,000 more would get us to like a hundred thousand of a match. Um, so, but it's better to have, you know, it's good that we have what we do have. Um, it'd be nice if we had a little bit more. I think like what I, Norm and I discussed was possibly like a two phased approach, use the first grant to try to do the kind of the infrastructure, the foundation, the roof, the heat, maybe the septic and the parking, and then use the L chip for like the nice stuff. That's more what they're interested in, uh, you know, to finish the inside. So I think it could be a good two pronged approach. It's like you mentioned, kind of a one time out of the blue opportunity. So it's really fortunate that the committee is still engaged and getting kind of the timing again. Maybe you could have used another month or two to get ready, but yeah. Well, I think the, the way it happened with Richmond Hall is once some of the grants along the, the donations kind of did follow. If people know that the donations are going to something that's going to happen because of the grant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's what we did waiting for. Having a decision to do with the board. I would want that if I was going to donate to something, I was going to support that they're a kind of thing. It just seems to be this, but yeah. Okay, there's no comments. There's no input. Thank you very much. We'll send you two names. If you should we assume all the charge and pursue the grant? Is that good or something? Yes, the function. Are you making that motion slide? I'm not, but <laughs> somebody might. Yeah, I think so it'd be good. Motion, to, yes, yeah. it'd be good to have that, that in motion. motion. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Any further input? Hearing none, those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to hear that we're finally moving forward on the building um, and that we're all in agreement now with uh, moving forward with it. So Don't tell Joanne. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> or Joe. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make a motion on Wickham Hall, Ralph. Make a motion we approve. The updated rental fees and the hour restrict or yeah, the hour requirement that's submitted. Second. I didn't thank you. Honor effort. <laughs> okay, new business. Uh, we discussed this a little bit last week when the chief was here, but uh, we're requesting expenditure for a new police cruiser. We're looking at a Tahoe uh, with outfitting for a total cost of uh, rounded up to 57000 from the police cruiser's capital reserve fund. Okay. The motion would be helpful, yes. Submitted, please. Second. Motion to second. Uh, further discussion. Hearing none. Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Make the motion that we approve the police detail rates as submitted. Second. And the police and the fire department. Yeah, together. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So we'll, we'll add the suggested uh, rate increase as shown on the chart for firefighter, EMT, et cetera. Second. Okay, motion to be made and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, contract award. So we did open, uh, we received one bid from TCD Construction, which is the company that's doing the doing the Richardson Park bathhouse project. Um, for kind of inside baseball reasons that 
may or may not be interested in. Basically, we wanted to use AIM or electric for the preferred contractor for the alarm and the electrical. And they, so we had them called out as a preferred subcontractor. AIMER submitted a separate bid, so we needed to have some time to kind of reconcile those mesh together if they needed to be added together. Um, so defer till uh, till next meeting, but it looks like we um, should be within within available funds. How oh, very significant was the last sentence? Uh, EPA grant, how much was that for was that? First? <laughs> that, that was for a Up to a million-ish. Up to a million was it? Gold-plated bobcat. I didn't put that in the grant, but... <laughs> <laughs> and we had semi low-ish hopes, is that fair to say? <laughs> cautious, yeah, cautious optimism. Yeah. So Good. we don't want to count that one yet. But. No, but it's nice that it's out there. They put it in, yeah. They, yeah. At least in the second cycle of the uh, uh, review period. So, and there's three review, review periods, so we'll the next couple weeks if uh, we may pass the second uh, portion of that. Do they know how wonderful the recycling center staff? They may know it's really good. good. Final step is an interview with Josh. So we like our chance to forget to the end. Okay. So we'll defer until next week. Yes, sir. All right. Job description review. Mainly just some reorganizing um, on this and incorporating duties that have kind of developed over time, such as the deputy tax collector portion of the role. Uh, Kevin, the tax collector, would like to uh, keep that maintained instead of having a dedicated deputy tax collector like we've had in the past. And then obviously the our current uh, environment, the Wickham Hall uh, rental aspect was non-existent when, when the job was created. And that's obviously a big part now. Either way, it's just as long as it's in the yeah, minutes. Make a motion that we accept the job description as presented. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Uh, regarding the administrative assistant to job description. Further discussion? Hearing that one. Right. All right. Mainly informational at this point, but we have the uh, 4114A hearings coming up on the two lots at the base of Marcy Hill Road that the board had um, kind of preliminarily discussed several months ago. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a hitch, hitch with one of them, but got, got through it. So, and that with the Conservation Commission on Monday, and they were, um, I'd say, relatively supportive. Um, didn't have any major input. And um, I think Planning Board will be on their next agenda. I'm just their next agenda, but. Joe doesn't need any of them for what he wants to do there. No, I don't think so. I think we have sufficient in the right of way. Or if anything, we're looking to try to narrow that approach yeah. up. Yeah. 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 I think he's thinking boulders. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, you know, be the... uh, just to follow up briefly on our. My daughters did that with the co op. Kept pinching up. Just on the Holbrook Avenue, uh, Mr. Lambert had emailed me as we discussed the new gentleman's contact info, and I got some traffic data from uh, Chief Joe. So providing that to him, <laughs> continuing the discussion. He said he was willing to put a yellow caution sign on. There's one 30. coming one way and not the other. So. Even you know, that'd be better than nothing. So we'll keep uh, gently prodding. All right, administrative update. I think that pretty much covers it this time. Oh, it's fine. A couple letters from one of your former uh, not Brent. brethren, sister, <laughs> sister, <laughs> sister. Colleague, one of your former colleagues. I think you were both on the board when we accepted that uh, corner lot on Causeway Road. So, yeah, it's a nice letter of you promising that we're going to do something great with that lot. It's been a, a pine tree farm ever since. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, public. Might even just be one, but yes. Okay. 
Here are loads of the motion. Second. Uh, a. Make a motion to look on public under A. See you tomorrow. Take care. A. Second. Second. Thank you. On public under A. Colby. Aye. I'm Walker. Karasinski. This meeting was recorded by Falls Area Community Television, located at One Hospital Court, Bellows Falls, Vermont. If you would like a copy of the meeting, our phone number is 802-463-1613 or email us at fact810 at gmail.com. Falls Area Community TV. Keeping government honest.